What is up guys, Andy Forrest, the Runner here, and today we're talking all things marathon shoe related, in particular, the shoes I have in my arsenal for a marathon, and which one we're gonna be using for next weekend's Abingdon Marathon. So this is a question I've been asking myself for a good four or five weeks now. Which shoe am I going to be running the Abingdon Marathon? I've been really, really fortunate to test out some great shoes over the last month or two. And to be honest with you, I've got some great shoes in the arsenal. We've got the Nike Zoom Fly 3, we've got the Nike Zoom Fly Original, and of course the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I had this decision in my head right up until last week. I knew which shoe I was running in and now it's all up in the air. So today I'm going to discuss the pros and the cons and which one I'm leaning towards more so running the marathon in. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new here get involved in the discussion in the comments below if you've ever run in any of these and let's without further ado dive in Okay guys, so let's, without further ado, not beat about the bush, let's dive straight in to the point. Which shoe has been a dead cert for me to run the Abingdon Marathon and which one has now thrown me a curveball? Well, it was, of course, the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. This shoe is absolutely incredible. I love it. I'm not going to keep going on about it. I've done enough videos on this shoe for you to know how much I love this shoe. But it did indeed throw me a curveball last week and it has thrown everything into the air for me made me sit down, made me look at my shoe selection, made me try and pick a shortlist and try and have a think and have a rational conversation with myself as to why I should maybe consider other shoes and which shoe might be best for me to run the Abingdon Marathon in. So this thing, as you guys know, I have raced a lot in. I've raced the half marathon recently, uh, 5K in, done loads of workouts in it, absolutely Shoe of the year, in my opinion, absolutely brilliant. But if some of you guys noticed in some of the Rincon videos I've done in the comments section, some of you haven't quite got on with the shoe. And there have been a couple of you in particular, and this I think is a Hoka brand thing in general, get blisters or hot spots on the underside of your feet in the arch area. And I found that very interesting because I've never had that. But the thing I have experienced is I've experienced that uh, if you have wide feet like I do, I can get away with this shoe and it's absolutely brilliant. Just about here, Right here on the outside, where my feet start to widen, I have always felt the material stretch around my feet. So if I look down at the shoe, I can see that the material is bulging to fit my feet in. It's never caused a problem, it never has been an issue. And that is, I guess, uh, I appreciate the fact that the material on the upper here is nice and flexible and accommodates my wide foot. So I've never had an issue until last week. That area when I was doing a workout around mile five or six, started to get rather painful, rather sore, and, and uh, quite rubbing, to be honest with you. So when I took my foot out, there was a bit of a red spot, and I'm not gonna lie, it was quite painful. And it threw everything up in the air for me because um, I have successfully run a half marathon in the shoe without any issues whatsoever. Uh, I have run 5Ks, I've done loads of miles already, I've hit well over 100 miles in it. And it always baffles me when shoes kind of throw these curveballs halfway through when you're using them, because it does happen uh, as to, to why it's happened. And then of course, not only that on the right foot, but then on the left foot, I had a very similar issue but then in the arch of my foot, I didn't get a blister or anything, but I did feel a hot spot developing. And I kind of just, those three things with the outside rubbing on the right, outside rubbing on the left, and then on the left arch, getting that rubbing sore spot, I was just kind of like, did not know what to think. So it's made me sit down, evaluate, and try and put together this short list of shoes that I can use potentially for the Avenue Marathon. So I'm not gonna go through all the superlatives of this thing, because it is great, I've been through them, but of course it has now thrown me a curveball. And my intention is to try and get out on another run in this thing before next week, a decent run. Um, but the problem is I don't want to do my last long run in it because I need to try out one of these two shoes in that just to kind of get comfortable and 
confirm a few things in my head. So I'm going to probably take this out on Monday or Tuesday next week and still see if I have those issues. Moving on, we have the Nike Zoom Flight Original, the trusty. This thing has 200 miles in it. It has been my training and racing shoe for such a long time and there would be no qualms for me simply just going, actually, do you know what? I'm going to use the Zoom Fly Original. This thing, again, wouldn't even be considered the Zoom Fly 3. But the last race I did in this thing, I got a blister on my heel, and that was a half marathon. So that has meant that this thing has been pushed to the back of the pile in terms of racing, because as soon as I get an issue, I tend to just shun the shoe out of the way. And that could have been for various reasons. I don't know. I've run successfully 200 miles in this shoe. Uh, this is where I'm looking for your rational input and feedback, guys. Um, but for me, getting that blister has really, really thrown me off a little bit. But it is, if I'm honest, the shoe I am leaning towards the most in terms of if I'm not going to use a ring con, I would be more likely to use this. It's light, it's nimble, it's got the carbon, or it's got the, it's got the kind of meta rocker carbon plate, whatever the Zoomfly original thing has in it. It's got some form of guidance in there. And it's just a great shoe. I love it. I love it. And then, of course, we move on to the Nike Zoomfly 3. The, the shoe... I have such a love-hate relationship, but if you are an eagle-eyed Strava stalker, you will notice I've been putting a heck of a lot of miles in this thing lately. We're nearly, I believe, at 150 miles now. I've been ramping up the miles in this shoe, mainly because I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Rincon and the Zoom Fly 3 next week as to which shoe is best for speed work. And I've been doing a lot of speed work in it and long runs. And uh, last weekend I did my long run in the Propel, but this thing has had some decent mileage in it lately. And I have been considering it, I'm not gonna lie. And the reason I've been considering it is if you guys have watched my videos, you'll know it's not my favorite shoe. The weight distribution in it is absolutely horrific. Nike have, in my opinion, butchered the Zoom Fly 3. It's just gone so downhill from the original version. And I haven't run in the Fly Knit, but from what you guys say, the Fly Knit as well. But it does produce great results. I've been doing speed work in it. I've been banging out some really, impressive for me quick times in my workouts the only thing i don't like about this shoe is i do get heel slippage in the shoe so i do feel like when i'm running due to the fact that it's so heavy down this end my foot kind of lifts off the back of the heel and then slides back down and i just get this continual feeling that my shoe is going to uh, my foot is going to fall out and this does not feel deep enough to support my shoe, uh, my foot in the shoe. So it's an extremely difficult decision, but that does not cause me any issues. I've not had any blisters, not had any rubbing. This shoe, as much as I hate it, has really delivered in terms of performances. So I really am in a quandary. So that, I guess, is the pros and cons of all of these shoes. So where does this leave me in terms of decisions? Well, let me explain what my process is going to be over the next few days. And of course, I'm looking for your rational comments in the uh, comment section below as to if you've run in these shoes, what you would recommend, what you have you run a marathon in any of these shoes? I would love to hear it. So for me personally, it's in the order of simply the order that they are displayed here. It's the Rincon, the original and the Zoom Fly 3. Um, it's sad that the Zoom Fly 3 is bumped right down to the bottom because quite frankly, out of all the three shoes, this is a shoe that has caused me no issues. I know a lot of you might be saying, well, if it's caused you no issues, why aren't you putting it in number one? Because I just have this love-hate relationship with the shoe. The heel slippage for me is annoying and the weight distribution is just horrific. It annoys me so much. Nike really, in my opinion, butchered that shoe, which is disappointing. However, it is what it is. Um, it's a comfortable shoe and I've been doing a lot of work in it, as I've said lately, and I am seriously considering it if I get issues in these two shoes. So plan of attack is gonna be take the original Zoom Fly out on Saturday if I get no issues and I get around nice 12 miles straightforward, no problem, no blisters, nothing like that then that's going to put this thing in strong contention for the win. However, I will then take this thing out on my Monday and Tuesday easy runs. If all is well, this will be the shoe that I run in, being completely honest. I'm hoping that the hot spot was just a one-off. It could have been the socks I was wearing with it. I never get it when I wear the Sock Mine socks. Uh, so I will be wearing, of course, the Sock Mine socks on race day. I do have some thicker socks and it could have been the fact that I was wearing those that caused the issue. So all being well, I'll make sure I wear some thin socks for my Monday and Tuesday run, make sure that's okay. If it is, it will be the ring con. If I get issues, it will be the original. And if these two give me issues, the backup plan, of course, is the Nike Zoom Fly 3. So if you've run a marathon in any of these shoes, I would love 
to hear your thoughts below. Please do give me some rational comments because my head is going absolutely overdrive. Who knew that out of everything you had to get prepared for a marathon that the shoes would be the hardest decision of them all. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. As I said, leave a comment in the description below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Share it with your friends. Of course, do hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And I will, of course, see you next time. Until then.